Like the hand scrub, the surgical skin prep is done to reduce the number of surface organisms to the lowest possible number. It is done on clean skin and is performed immediately prior to the surgical procedure because over time, the remaining organisms on skin multiply, increasing the opportunity for operative site infection. Although many surgeons still prefer that the hair be removed from the surgical site, current recommendations are that hair should be removed only if necessary. The three techniques most frequently used for hair removal are shaving, clipping, and the use of a depilatory. Wet shaving is the most common and has the advantage of being easily and rapidly done. However, it causes microscopic cuts and surface abrasions which impair skin integrity and increase the opportunities for infection. Clipping uses an electric razor or hair clipper with a detachable head that can be sanitized between patients. It is less likely to cut the skin but can still pull and cause skin irritation and it does not fully remove hair at the skin. Whether or not the site is shaved, it must be thoroughly cleaned with an antiseptic solution immediately prior to the surgical procedure. This is done in the OR once the patient has been transferred from the gurney to the surgical table. All manipulation of the table into the correct configuration and correct placement of the patient should be completed before the antibacterial skin prep is done. Moving the patient after the prep increases opportunities for contamination of the surgical site. However, it is important to note that positioning of the patient does have implications related to asepsis. Pressure areas can develop, particularly during a long procedure, and these can lead to deep tissue breakdown and serious systemic infection. Know and follow agency guidelines on OR patient positioning and pressure relief measures. Surgical site skin preparation is done immediately before draping. Begin by examining the skin for any evidence of open wounds or infection. Depending on the urgency and reason for the surgery, the presence of these may or may not cause postponement of the procedure but they must always be noted in the patient record and the surgeon made aware of them prior to proceeding. Also assess for the presence of any appliances, catheters, or ostomies, as these may alter the skin preparation procedure. Explain to the patient about the skin prep procedure and answer any questions before beginning. Goggles or a face shield should be worn to protect against any splashing of antiseptic fluids, Gloves are also worn and are then changed for a new pair immediately following the prep procedure. Some products come preloaded within a sponge while others are in liquid form and are applied using gauze pads. The classical scrub is done in a circular manner beginning at the center of the surgical site and progressing outward in an overlapping spiral. The prep is extended well beyond the anticipated incision don't go back over scrubbed areas with the sponge. Each sponge or pad is used once, then discarded, and a fresh one used for the next pass. The site is normally washed three times, and then the solution is allowed to dry. Follow manufacturer's guidelines for the specific solution used. Allowing the solution to dry further reduces microorganisms, Studies of some PrEP solutions have shown that they also can maintain a barrier against bacteria if left in place. For this reason, the dry solution is not washed from the skin prior to draping for surgery, and some products may be left in place for 24 hours following the surgery. The rationale behind prepping in a circular fashion is based on the long-held concept of working from clean to dirty to prevent microorganisms or debris from being carried into the field, but some products now carry different instructions. The manufacturer recommended technique of application for one of the new chlorhexidine and alcohol surgical skin preps is repeated back and forth strokes for 30 seconds on dry surgical sites.